In this video I'm going to show you a very simple effect which is the pucker and bloat effect. As you can see on your page here you've got some pretty cool designs and these have all been made from very simple shapes such as squares, circles, triangles and stars. So let's pop on over to Illustrator and we'll get started at making some of these pretty simple shapes. We'll call it um, pucker and bloat. We'll have a print profile set up, A4 size, landscape orientation, 3 mil bleed, CMYK color mode, and high raster effects. We'll click OK and we'll end up with our artboard on our page where we can get started. I'm going to pick up the rectangle tool first of all today and choose a nice bright fill color and remove the stroke. Once you've got that, just hold down shift and draw yourself a rectangle. I'm going to go up to the edit menu next and copy that and then go down to edit again and paste in front. Oh, shortcuts are control C, control F. What that does is place another square on top of our original. If you look in the layers panel here you can see we've got two squares, one on top of the other. What we're going to do with this one on top is just grab our selection tool and then hold down the alt key and the shift key at the same time. So alt and shift, you can click and drag and just make a little border around the outside of that. What we're going to do now is select all, whether highlighting them or pressing Control A, choosing select all. And we're going to pop on over to our Pathfinder panel. So you might need to go to your window menu and get your Pathfinder up. One's hiding over here, so I'll just drag it up so you can see it. And the one we want to press while well, we've got everything selected is this one here called Minus Front. And that's going to minus that little rectangle in front of the other one. And it's going to create a nice big hole there and just give us the outline of a square. We're going to do that same effect on some other shapes. So we'll grab our ellipse tool, change our color up, hold shift and draw an ellipse. We'll press Ctrl C to copy, you'll go up to edit and copy. Press Ctrl F, we'll go up to edit and paste in front. Using the black arrow again, we're going to hold Alt and Shift and drag in so we've got a border around that. We'll highlight both of the circles and minus the front one more time. Might just do one more shape now. Let's just grab the polygon tool. Uh, we've got a triangle on our page. I might undo that. We'll do a five sided shape just for something different. Okay, once you've clicked on your page there, we will change its color. Let's pick blue. And I'm going to copy it by going to edit, copy. And we'll go down to edit and paste in front. Using the Alt and Shift keys while they're selected, just resize that pentagon. It's a little bit off, so I might just nudge it around with my arrow keys. And we're going to minus the front of that one too. Okay. So we're ready now to put some pucker and bloat effects onto these. What we're going to do is start with a circle here. We're going to go up to the Effect menu, Distort and Transform, and Pucker and Bloat. From here, make sure you check the preview box and just move this lever around. If we want to bloat it, you see the sorts of effects we're going to get. Some pretty nice effects there. And if we go the other way to pucker, you can see what it does when it puckers up. Just have a bit of a play around until you get a cool looking shape. And click OK. If you need to resize it, just resize it like usual. Okay, so that's my first cool shape. Down on my one, two, three, four, five, pentagon here. We can do the same thing. Go to effect, distort and transform, and pucker and bloat. And the same thing is going to happen. If you press preview, you can start to deform these shapes. It's a nice way to make flowers doing it that way. Let's see what sort of effects if we go back to the pucker side. So I'm just going to make a bit of a flower for now. If we get it to 100%, this should look pretty good. It's Resize it by making it a bit smaller, pushing that to the side. Now we can do the same with the square here, but I'm going to show you another trick. What we're going to do is while we've got this square selected, I'm going to go up to the object menu here and go down to path, and we're going to go add anchor points. What that does is adds a few more of these little blue anchor points around our document, we'll just around that shape. If I go up to the pucker and bloat effect now and preview it, you can see when I bloat, those anchor points are where the effects start to take place. Okay, you can see it clearly on that one, all the effects going through those anchor points. 
what we can do, if I just cancel that, is go back to Object, Path, and do that another time. Add some more anchor points, and now you can see even more little anchor points appearing around your square. So now when we apply the Pucker and Bloat effect, there's even more little dots, little anchor points, for this effect to go on. You can start to see what's happening. Okay, so if we go back to the bloat side, we can get some pretty cool effects by adding more anchor points. Now okay, you're not just stuck with these colours either, you can colour these in. And what I like to do is put a gradient through them. Okay, so you can pick some different colours, you can go down here and change these colours up. You might throw a green in there, you might drag a blue down on there. What other colours look good, we might throw a red in there somewhere. like that. There's the red. You can play around with these levers at the top too and down here to get different effects. So you can, can have multicolored shapes. You can also change the angle of that gradient. Okay, if you want to move it around a bit, feel free to move that around as well. Okay. That's basically how you use the pucker and bloat effect in Adobe Illustrator.